it's a bit like a golf swing. So you're starting off your golf. Uh, you can't swing. The first thing is try and get a swing. You're not even thinking about putting, uh, what's the ball going to do on the green, uh, how to hit it around a tree. It's fundamental. So, you know, we've all, some guys coach fundamentals, some guys coach skills, some guys coach uh, the mental side of things. I think the better you get, obviously, the more skills you get and the more mental tools you need at your disposal. Um, you know, on the golf course, once your swings, uh, if you've grooved your swing, then you're looking to cut the ball, uh, draw the ball, look at conditions. Uh, you know, pros, you often hear pros about saying, I play this course really well. It's their game plan. And that's where it's easier for me to look in, and I'm looking more at the mental side of things, and that's where we can get overlooked in terms of where you are coaching at the moment. So for me, it's easy to talk about the mental side of things, game plans. Uh, the level two course, there was a little question there about uh, grips. I had no idea. I just know you grab, feel comfortable, and I'm looking for uh, field positions where I'm going to go over. Where other guys are looking, okay, well, you're coaching a seven-year-old, everything's got to be. So that's the different levels we we're talking about at the moment. Um, you know, just on those game plans, I think practicing smart. You can practice smart when you're nine years old, seven years old, 15, 16, all the way up to where we are. I think I haven't practiced smart in my life. I've only really started practicing smart let's say the last five, six, seven years. And if I'd started earlier, I reckon mentally I would have been in a better space and um, skill-wise, probably skill enhanced. So that's that's what I'm trying to get across here today in terms of uh, practicing. doesn't matter what format you're playing in, just practice smart. So for a young kid, the fundamentals are in place, you've got that golf swing. Now you're looking to see how you're going to draw the ball, uh, basically in cricket terms, what shots you're going to use. All right. Fundamentals, getting the different shots in. Why play that shot to a certain guy? Now you're getting the skill and mental side of things into play. Uh, I'll give you an example of everyone. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> so practicing smart for a nine, ten year old. All right. Fundamentals are in basics. Nice and talented. Um, he normally gets runs in his school. Try and try and practice him smart. It's easy. He'll face his peers, pick them out of the nets. He's basically not growing unless he plays another age group or whatever it is. So as the coach, you're going to be practicing smart. Bring cones in. Say, so listen, every time you hit that cone, that's a one. Run one. You know, there's so many drills you can do, so that's a one. So in the game, he's not just thinking, all right, I'm a... And it normally happens with your bigger, stronger boys. All right, I've been always a short, uh, short, small guy, so I've always had to uh, work for my food, where uh, your taller, bigger guys, a guy like Vaughn from your asphalt, he's probably that size in standard five. I coached him in standard five. And he was basically... He didn't have to worry about singles. He used to just bang it out the park. So his development got curtailed, because skill factors in terms of bringing other skills to it. So boxing smart for him would be, I know you can play the big shots, let's try and hit these, these cones on the side here. And that's where your gaps are for your ones, or rotating the strike. Uh, slightly further on in terms of um, where we are at the moment, boxing smart. So basically when I go into the net, I'm playing on Thursday, I'm thinking exactly who's going to be bowling to me. Thunderbutt, uh, Quinton Friend, I know exactly what they're all doing. So I'm simulating in my head when a guy runs in and he's doing the same sort of thing as a young fan of art. He's taken away from me. I'm picturing this is young fan of art and where I'm going to be scoring off him and where his field's going to be. So mentally, I'm not worried about the grip, hitting the ball, showing off, whatever. I'm worried about getting the job done. Um, you know, my philosophy is good for me. It might not be good for someone else. You know, uh, a Kevin Peterson does what he does because he might have another outlook compared to me. I'm a little bit more one side and we know what Kevin is the other side in terms of that so I don't think you can stereotype or box people uh, I think it, it's boxing clever for the individual in terms of what you want to get out and that's why I came back to your game plan so we've got two examples here I've got myself and uh, Vaughn van Yarsel I'll use Vaughn because uh, I did a bit of coaching with him when I was younger so for, for Vaughn um, his challenge now going forward in terms of game plans uh, he's a big hitter we know when in trouble he can hit fours and sixes uh, he can't rotate the strike like I can, but I can't hit the ball like he can. So our game plans are completely different. We practice a certain way. Um, you know, I find it easy. I'm a touch player, so I find knocking ones a lot easier than he does. So for him to try and get my game plan or try and bat like me, it's going to be, you know, if my philosophy or whatever it is, it's going to be detrimental to him. He's got to have his own blueprints, and I call game plans blueprints. It's basically getting a sort of... Uh, how you want to play the game, where you want to, where you want to score, and, and what you want to do. You know what enjoyment you you, you, get, you do. A uh, guy like Pollard, 
I can't play like Pollock. He goes in there with no care in the world, blocks a few. If he faces 10 dot balls and he's got no runs, he knows he can catch it up in three balls. Where well, I know I'm not going to catch it up in three balls. So I've got to make sure I'm mentally tuned in when I go into bat in a 2020 situation. But I've got to try and go, I give myself 10 balls and I've got to be around 8, 9, 10 runs. And then once I've given myself the chance, then I can hit strategic falls where, you know, Gail, he doesn't <coughs> worry where the fielders are, he just worries about his connection. Now I'm worried about my, where the fielders are because I need, even if I connect it nicely, I could be caught on the boundary. Where he keep, uh, catches it half well, he's gone. So what works for one guy doesn't work nearly work for another, uh, another guy, especially coaching young guys. You've got a big guy, you've got a small guy, where they're going to score? What areas are they going to score in? It's no use trying to teach a seven-year-old to keep driving. Yes, the fundamentals are driving. I think I hit, hit my first drive for four when I must have been 14, 15. So I'm not getting any runs before then. So where did I get my runs from? So I'm short, I pick up line and length a lot better than anyone else, hook and pull. So the coach would tear his hair out of me saying, playing across the line, so that's where I'm going to be scoring. In fact, the fundamentals I had to get in place, so I knew I could drive. But driving for no runs and driving and hooking for runs, I know where I want to be. You know? and, and that's the sort of uh, challenge, as you will, about uh, sort of getting a game plan and getting certain, the best out of your different players. That's the key for me. Like the fun factor is finding out what you can and can't do. So you've got a short guy, end of his net session, you're happy with his fundamentals. He's driving well, he's cutting well. So listen, for the next five minutes, I want you to slog. Find out what you can and can't do. Because if you don't have that slogging session, you know, I often go to nets and guys are slogging, the guy, the coach is pulling his ear out, thinking, geez, I've lost control here. These guys are slogging, whatever. It's a way of finding out. Duncan Fletcher was the first guy to sort of, you know, I always used to do it, but I, you know, you've got one eye on the coach when you're younger. He was saying, you've got to do things to find out what you can and can't do. Every year, without fail, I try and slog sweep Aaron Pangisa every season. 2020 comes, the white balls come out, I try and slog sweep it. Where does it go? Straight out. out. But every year I try. I might be a slow learner, but every year I try. <laughs> and it doesn't work every year. So what do I do? Do I take it into the game? No, because I found out what I can and can't do. Um, can I hit over cover uh, perfectly the whole time? No. Can I go leg side and be effective leg side? Yes, I can. Because I've done it, practiced it, and that's my game plan in terms of that. So I've, I've developed a skill set that I back, I trust, and that is my game plan. You see how it's all working it back to your game plans and, and, and your trust. And the biggest thing for especially international cricket as well, everyone's got different game plans. All right, a guy like Hashim Amla, he goes out there, uh, his game plan will be slightly different to what I will be. He'll be leaving duck balls, I'll be playing more. I'll be leaving back foot uh, drives. I'm a short guy, I don't get onto my ball, I mean, my top of my toes as nicely as, as, as I can, so I can't get on top of the ball. So that, that for me is a no-no shot in four-day cricket. So really our game plans are different. But if I'm drilling that in practice, when the big pressure comes, when I'm facing uh, Mitchell Johnson running in at 150, uh, when I'm a, a game down in the series, when I haven't scored, when I think my selection's up for uh, sort of a debate, I can fall back on that game plan with trust. How many times do you feel your youngsters there and, you, and, and, you, and they're playing beautifully? They've got a lovely 20, lovely 30. All of a sudden, a huge drive comes out and they nickel. You go to them. What, what has happened? You know, we need 10 runs to win or you're looking so good. What happened? Oh, no, uh, coach, I had a slip. Uh, I, I thought it was there. You know? And there's, there's two time, kinds of faults. There's a mental fault and there's a technical fault. I don't mind the technical fault. I hate the mental fault. So technically, if I, don't, if I fall over, I get LBW, and it's, and it's a technical thing. I haven't been thinking, geez, this guy's fast. He's going to bowl me a bouncer, and I'm looking for the bouncer that I get hit on the leg. That, for me, that's a mental fault. Technical fault, fall over, everyone does it, done. But a mental fault for me is something that I'm outside my game plan. So it's landed at a 50-50% chance of, of a nick, which I normally leave. I go for it, I'm caught out, then I'm grounded. Now we have our team chats, and uh, so some guy hasn't got a weakness, like a guy like Wurta Dipena. There wasn't <coughs> one particular thing that he has a weakness. Then the guy would sit there, and it's normally the, the clever fast bowlers. They sit there and they say, hey, it's like nicks off. He nicks off on fourth down. So we look there and we say, well, everybody nicks off on fourth down. You know? That's the nature of the game. So it's how you deal with that. And that's the, that's the, that's the what I'm talking about in having a game plan. If you trust and develop your game plan as such, your nerves, doesn't matter if you 
bad drink the night before, fighting with your missus, kids have kept you up, uh, haven't got any sleep, whatever it is. If you trust that game plan that puts you in a slightly relaxed uh, state and, and you trusting what is out there. So, you know, you've got out a certain way, you trust them, listen, I'm a good enough player, my game plan is this, it won't happen again. You know, you can just see Hashim Amla on the weekend. You know, mm-hmm. there's been a, bit of, a bit of a write-up. Uh, I don't know why, he's only failed uh, two games, <laughs> two, two innings is there, whatever. So you can see his feet up front, yeah, there's nerves. You know, no, one, no one can squash the nerves or whatever. But he reverted back to his game plan. So he had one or two moments there in terms of his timing of his feet. Um, and then all of a sudden, <coughs> you know, one shot, uh, you know, got his confidence back, but he trusted his game plan the whole time. You know, a guy like Jacques Callas did so well for so many years is because if you bowled him that ball from Monday to Sunday, he would block it. If you bowled that ball from Monday to Sunday, uh, another day, uh, whatever, puller, he'd drive it. He'd never change up. His game plan would be the same. You know, I, I once batted with him when he was playing against India, and he hit an unbelievable shot. One ball shaping away from him, waited for it, just sort of, same as that little guy did. Uh, through the covers, and I saw him punch his bat. I went up to him and said, oh, great shot. No, he, and he wasn't happy with it, because yeah. he was gone outside his game plan yeah. for that particular time. And obviously your game plan is adaptable to ter- certain wickets. So that's why I'm saying practice smart. So <laughs> not to take it, I'll take it slightly to the pros. Uh, so if you're playing on a green wicket here in, 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 at the Wanderers or the half belt, the ball bounces more. So my game plan is, you want to get to off stump, you want to leave on bounce. Coastal, you want to stay slightly leg side. So you've got to practice that. So your game plan does change from, from game to game, bowlers to bowlers, but you've got to trust that and you've trained that. Every batter has got those two men on his, on his shoulder. One saying, hit it, because mom and dad are watching, and one saying, no, granddad uh, doesn't want you to hit it, he doesn't want you to go up, he wants you to play prim and proper. So which one are you listening to? And that's where your game plan comes back into it as well. So you shut one out. Um, so, so, so basically, uh, you're not premeditating. I'll premeditate areas when I'm looking to hit if a ball lands there, but that's my game plan. And that's more on the shorter format. So I'll give an example, 2020 cricket. My game plan that I've got for an off spinner. All right, sorry to get, yeah, I'll keep it being too technical or whatever it is. So normal offside a spinner's field. As a small guy, can't clear the boundary as much as anybody else, I'm looking to go over the four guys in the ring. Okay, so that's cover, mid wicket, 45 uh, uh, point. All right, so my game plan involves beating those guys when I want the boundary, rotating in those gaps, rotating short. Born from your spots, uh, uh, his game plan is make sure he's hitting those gaps. doesn't have to go for four, but he's hitting those gaps for one. That's how he rotates the strike. All right, so my game plan is that. Now what I'm trying to do is I'm looking at that square leg uh, guy uh, on the cow sweep. If he gets too square, I'm going over this guy and I'm chipping him there for four. That's my boundary option. You see how mentally... You start getting ahead of the game. I'm not looking at my grip, I'm not looking where my feet are. I'm thinking where I'm scoring and what's the best for my opportunity. So this is what I try and do. So that guy there, if he's uh, too square, I try to chip there. And what does I do? If I chip one there, the captain does that. Now I'm premeditating a sweep because now I want to go hard straight here. All right. Other premeditation I'll do is I'll look online. I'll go reverse because I want this guy who's, uh, uh, who's stopping my one options. I want to go the other side to point. I wouldn't be watching me and coaching your youngsters there. <laughs> <laughs> that's called my curtain rail. You know, we just open in the morning, you open the curtains. <laughs> <there>. <laughs> so I've, that's, you know, I've never been an opening batter, I've batted number four, so I had to find a way uh, when they asked me to open the batting. So I had to find a way. And being a number four and a five, I used to be very attacking batter. So my front foot, I used to go at the ball quite hard. Uh, now I had to, in England, where it's a juke ball, got a big seam, it moves around a lot. So you've got to play as late as you can. But I was always a. Uh, you know, a little bit more flair, used to get big strides in and then use my hands around, where you can't be doing that anyway. So I had to change my game plan and my tech. I had to change my technical side of things, which obviously changed my game plan. So that was just a way of me getting in line, getting, you know, like I said, standing on off stuff. So getting in line and then judging at the last minute, trying to play late. And that's where I used to pull up. So... Well, I was like, I was bowled a few times. I was everything a few times. It worked once, so that's good. <laughs>